Well, sometimes it doesn't. Hello. Hey. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for your well, wonderful present. I was able to stock up yesterday. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's yes. the first one we've ever had. It That's is. I, I know. I, it was sho not shocking, but it was just such a wonderful surprise yesterday morning. So, oh, um, good. Yeah. Um, so, I have something that just literally happened this morning with my Westie. Uh, I got a call from my vet um, after having his uh, fall blood work done. Yeah. Um, and um, he had a, a slight elevation in his ALP, which. Um, so there was, yeah, yeah. They're not completely concerned right now with that because there's so many things that could slightly elevate that. Yeah. But the one thing was he had some elevated potassium, oh, and okay. he's never had this before. Um, and it, one of the things I was worried about was his kidneys because he's been frequently, like really frequently, like asking to go out every hour. And having these tiny little peas. So I thought definitely there was something with his kidney, but nothing came back on that except this potassium um, being level. High. Being high. High, not um, low, right? High, yeah. Hmm. And um, I didn't know if there's anything I'm giving him that could be causing um, high potassium, but. I'm not giving him really anything new other than phytosphora is the only new introduction um, to his gut soothe, his liver tonic, um, and jump for joints on a daily basis is what he gets. Yeah. Um, and, and then, of course, old? pardon me? How old is he? He it, uh, is 15. He's 15. And his calcium was okay. His calcium phosphorus or calcium phosphorus ratio and all that was normal. Yeah, every, every absolutely everything was normal. Um, I think it's his. Oh, I don't remember. There is one liver enzyme that's always slightly low on him. I think it may have been his ALT, but that's been low in him like always. Okay. Um, so other than that. ALP and the potassium, everything else checked out fine. And he had a full senior blood panel workup. And what did your vet think? So he, um, he we're going to monitor him and then recheck his levels next week. Uh, but he did want to, um, if they were still high, look into Addison's or Cushing's with him as potential. Because we really can't. Is he, has he been acting weak at all? Um, well, his hind end is getting weaker, but I think that's more his age and his joints is what I put that down to, um, mm -hmm. not being able to jump up as much. Um, and he's not like, he's certainly not a, a fast dog anymore, but he, he gets around and we go for a our walks and around the yard he's he's good is he panting a lot yes yeah, so this is the one thing i brought up um he um pants but also does like a bit of a lip smack like where his tongue he kind of smacks his tongue a little bit um mm -hmm. through the night um like he like to me if that was me doing it I, I, it seems like a bit of nausea with him yeah and is he really thirsty? I'd say his maybe a slight increase in his thirst, but he's not, I don't find it terribly thirsty. Is he super hungry? He will always eat. And my young um, girl, who's just a year now, um, he always tries to get at her food. Now, her food is much more enticing, I guess, to him. But um, yeah, he will always eat. He's always looking around for scraps. He gets fed twice a day. Does he look pot belly? Does he losing hair? Anything like that? Uh, his hair is thinned out a bit. I find um, 
not not pot belly per se. Um, he has gotten a bit of light, like around his eyes, the pigment in the skin around his eyes and nose is, is pale. Um, but I wouldn't say his, his tummy is pot bellied. Mm -hmm. Did they do a urine test with him? They are going to do that next week. So do me a favor, ask them to do, ask them to give you, um, the cup, right? Yeah. And get, you just get a stainless steel, um, uh, ladle, like a stainless steel, um, uh, soup ladle. Yeah. And get the first pee of the morning. Like, don't let them go out and go pee. Get, get the very first pee. Okay. Get it in and ask them to do, like prior to, to, to taking it in, ask them if they can do a, um, a urine cortisol creatinine ratio. Okay. And that sounds like what he said to me today. That, okay. Cause that will, that'll check a lot. That'll like, you know, you, you need to do what you need to do, but I feel like, um, Addison's is one thing. Uh, Cushing's is something. They're they're on the opposite sides of the the spectrum, right? Yeah. So um, I would think. I don't know if he was Addisonian. I would think that you know you never know, but I would think he would be weaker or have 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 episodes of being of collapsing and stuff. You know. Okay. Yeah. Usually, but not always. But what I worry about with 14 year old dogs is um, uh, if they're going down the route of the urine cortisol creatinine ratio will tell you a lot of okay. where the cortisol levels are, are, are at. And if you do it at the clinic, they won't be accurate because his stress levels will be up. So his cortisol right. level will be up. So you have to get it at home when he's- okay when it's just like he's not even going anywhere and everything's normal. Um, and it has to be first thing in the morning. And when you do that, and also they'll, I'm sure they'll check his, um, uh, you know, to see what his specific gravity is to see if he's concentrating his urine correctly. So that'll check out his kidney function a little bit too. And um, you'll definitely be able to see with, with that ratio what his adrenal glands are doing. Um, and then if they still believe that, if they're still concerned that he might be going into more of a cushionoid thing, I would always base it on, I don't like doing ACTH and ACTH stem tests, and I don't even like doing low dose, dose DEX tests. Because this is just honestly my opinion. Because if it, I I just have seen too many times them being on the border of of being cushionoid, and when they get the tests, it pushes them into full blown Cushing's. Okay, Are you following me? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you're really like a holistically oriented person, and you really feel like if they do, they can do an ultrasound too, right? They can do an ultrasound, yeah. which is non-invasive. Um, they can look at his adrenal glands and look at his kidneys. And then they can do the urine cortisol creatinine ratio. And they can even do a resting cortisol, cortisol blood test. But the urine cortisol creatinine ratio, an ultrasound in the blood work of what, you, what you're seeing and him symptomatically, you should be able to get a pretty good representation of what's going on with him rather than biting the bullet and doing when he's not that symptomatic doing um more invasive tests and and possibly pushing him into it and then you then you're dealing with a dog that's got full-on cushings so we did at our clinic we did a really incredible homeopathic cushings protocol and our our patients did so phenomenally well on it you have no idea like they did they did so so well so i would once you get all the results back i highly recommend that you get a hold of um andrea ring she's okay. the girl that i always recommend to do homeopathic consults and she can um 
she can definitely uh, um, offer you some advice about and send you the homeopathic remedies for Cushing's. I would do that first. And because sometimes they never have to go in the Cushing's drugs, especially if it catch it super early like this. Um, and then what you do is you do that and then you keep them on that as long as you possibly can, especially if he's 14. And then if you absolutely have to go on the drug, then you're going on the drug like way later, right? Like yeah. you're using the drug as a last resort rather than a first resort. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I, cause I really don't, I don't want to get him on more drugs. I'd rather go down the, is he on drugs now? Route. Um, no, he doesn't take um, anything except for um, the pre and probiotics and the liver tonic, okay. um, which have like his health has been incredible um, on that. And this isn't the first time they've thought Addison's and Cushing's. He was mm -hmm. tested for Addison's in 2018 and oh. came back clear. And um, about five years ago, tested for Cushing's, not the, like you said, not the big full blown test, just, um, just some levels and there weren't enough markers to do the full blown test at that time. Yeah. Well, I still don't, I mean, for me, that's the amazing part about the homeopathy is you can, it's just really important for you to, um, be super clear on, on his symptoms, right? So, you yeah. know, you need to mark down what you would like to see change. So if he's drinking more or peeing more or, or whatever, though all those symptoms should change. They should all get ameliorated or get better with the homeopathic protocol, right? Okay. So, um, and, and honestly, everybody has their own philosophy and everybody has to have their comfort zone. But for me, when you're looking at a 14-year-old dog, I look at quality of life and I look at what they're presenting to me. So mm -hmm. when the energy starts to get better and they're doing better and they're really asymptomatic, I I wouldn't even be I wouldn't be really thinking of doing anything super invasive like that. An ultrasound never hurts. An ultrasound okay. is always a nice baseline thing to look at um i wouldn't do any fine needle aspirates with the ultrasound though even if they did find something so that's one thing you'd have to say if you're going to get an ultrasound <clears throat> is you'd have to decline a fine uh, decline any fine needle aspirates um but your philosophy has to, your, uh, your philosophy has to match that that declining as well meaning you know if he's 14 years old and they did find a tumor or they did find something, would you do chemotherapy? Would you do radiation? Would you do, you know, surgery? And if all yeah. of those answers are no, then you, you wouldn't do a fine needle aspirate because, um, your, your, when, a, when the needle goes into something and you pull that needle back out, there's a, there's a very high chance of, of spreading the 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 tumor cell. Oh, wow. If okay. They're, if they're not great. If it's not something great. If you were going, if it was unoperable, and you were definitely going to do radiation or or chemotherapy, then you'd have to do it because then you would yeah. need the specifics. Um, and sometimes, you know, even if there's a big tumor in there, even if they see that there's a big tumor in there, I don't think your dog has a tumor. I'm just yeah. I'm just this for the whole group. <laughs> for the whole group yeah um you know if you have a, a dog that's older or whatever or you have a, your philosophy is to do less than more but you did an ultrasound and you would and you saw a tumor then what we used to do at our clinic is is we would just go in and take it out without fussing with it like if it was okay. there and and we wanted to do something with this tumor then then because it was you know being it was really invasive in the body cavity and the animal was young or whatever we wouldn't do the fine needle aspirates we would just go in remove the tumor and then take the whole tumor for uh for a histopathology like i would send the whole tumor off for um for the pathologist to look at and then they could come back and let us know what it was and then we would make our decisions based on on what it was then 
rather than aggravating the tumor, making the tumor angry, um, causing potential spread when you're when you're removing the needle, you know? Yeah. No, and and that all seems very um for me that's good, good um bit of information because I'm not prepared at his age and like he seems in fine health. So like we weren't re other than the the more frequent urination, that was the only new thing added to mm -hmm. him that yeah. I, at this age and risk, I just want to be as uh, the on the Proactive less invasive side. Possible. Yeah, and you did, you did, they did a thyroid, they checked his thyroid too? I believe so. I'll double check that. Uh, when that, I then I would do a full thyroid panel. I would, okay, full, it's called, it's called a full canine thyroid panel. Okay, great. Well, I will do all that. And, and so he's okay uh, with a potassium level elevated to stay on everything he's on in terms oh, of, yeah. yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's always great chatting with you and uh, have a great night. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to try to hopefully not cut out very much here. Um, <laughs> um, I have a 15 month German Shepherd dog who I got from a local rescue. Um, came to me at nine weeks old. He was already neutered at eight weeks old. Um, pretty much over vaccinated already from the beginning. And me not knowing enough research, I kind of continued to go through with more, um, thinking I was doing good. Um, so, probably by about that last puppy shot and the rabies shot, I'd say about two two, three months after he started developing these uh, skin infections. Uh, he had open lesions all over his body. He was constantly licking at himself, chewing himself raw. Um, just a mess of a dog. Um, <laughs> he was in a cone for months. Uh, we put him on antibiotics. Um, he's had a total of eight, uh, eight weeks of antibiotics at different intervals because we the, um, the infection went away with yeah. antibiotics, but of course it came back. So then we did it again, they went away, and then it came back. Um, and that's when I kind of said, enough, um, this isn't working. So I've recently got in, um, done some homeopathic um, remedies. So we've done some Belladonna as well as Arsenicum Album 200. Um, the arsenic didn't really help too much, but the Belladonna seems to, every time he starts to get those little pimples that tend to look like they're going to burst soon, I start giving him some belladonna and within a few days they're gone. They disappear, but they keep coming back. It just keeps kind of every couple of weeks, it keeps coming back. I catch it right away and then it goes away, but keeps coming back. So okay. I've been trying to lead up to doing the yeasty beast uh, to the leaky gut, but I can never seem to get past liver tonic and phytos. It just seems I'm always usually on them for about a month and about a month later, that's when he starts to break out in these sores again. So I can never seem to get past that. <laughs> you can't, but, yeah. but he was, he was breaking out before you tried both of those, right? Yeah. He was breaking up before I even tried anything from adored beast or anything homeopathic. Okay. And now you could be on, you could be on the leaky gut protocol. Is that what you're saying? I'm trying to lead up to that. So I was trying uh -oh. to do the phytos and do the yeasty beast because I'm Stephanie is that now and his feet that kind of comes and goes. Stephanie, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Renee. It just started to break up a little bit there, but I have your question here and I can I can read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So she has never been able to get past the liver tonic and the phytosflora protocol. Every time I get close to starting the yeasty beast, his skin flares up. I'm just wondering what my next step should be to continue going forward. I need to heal his gut. Do I need to push him through with continuous treatments of homeopathy? Is it possible I could be dealing with a deeper issue that I should be addressing? So, so what is she saying that she can't, she can't start the protocol because he breaks out before? Yeah, start? I believe he's having breakouts so so badly that it just 
she has to turn back to the drugs to kind of make it stop. Get her to, get her to answer that in the chat. So what, what's stopping her from starting the yeasty beast? Renee, if just, you could it's just because he starts to get all the, can, sorry, can you hear me? Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, it's just that he starts to get that, those, you know, those little pit, the liver tonic and the phytos, but I don't go to ECB yet because I'm scared I'm going to overload his body and then it's going to get just, I've been those for quite some time. Okay, you're, you're super duper breaking up. So just, just say, I yes. know. <laughs> so, um, so what you're saying is that he's on liver tonic and phytos flora. Yes. And that he'll be going along, he'll be okay, then all of a sudden he'll break out. Yeah. So you don't want to put him on the leaky gut protocol or the yeasty beast protocol because you're worried he's going to get worse? Yes. Okay. And, like, and really um, bad. And really bad. Why? Yeah. Why are you afraid he's going to get worse? Just because it seems I've been dealing with about eight months of problems with him. Constant, okay. constant just issues with ears, feet. Yeah. I just don't want him to have a yeast die off or. No, no, no. Just... Okay. So what I would do, this is what I would do. I would start the leaky gut protocol. Okay. And the reason that I said that is okay. because he needs to, I would, I would seriously get him on the anti-vaccinosis which is in the Yeasty Beats protocol, right? Especially when you said everything was going along and then it was just right after his last set of vaccines. I think that would be mm. really super helpful for him. So I would do that. Okay. And then I would start the protocol, just like I was saying to Peter, start the protocol at a quarter of the dose. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so what you can do is... Um, Maybe start, maybe, yeah, just start, like, do the yeasty beast and the liver tonic, not the yeasty beast, you do the anti-vax and the liver tonic exactly the way it says to do it. But then the powders um, and also the, the, the remedy, the, the gut seal, do all those normally. But mm -hmm. the powders, start the powders at a quarter of the dose and keep them on a okay. quarter, quarter of the dose of the powders for, like, two to three weeks. And then okay. go from a quarter of the dose of the powders to half a dose, right? And okay. really gradually work him up to a full dose, like maybe over six weeks even. Yeah. If you're really scared that he's going he's gonna to have a die off or something like that. Um, that's what I would do. And pay super, super close attention that if you give him the anti-vax and you notice an improvement with the, with the anti-vax, you know, over the week maybe. And then all of a sudden you see him starting to decline or you see, you know, maybe three weeks into it, he starts to decline. Repeat the anti-vax. Okay. I've, se I've, I've seen dogs that have, you know, pretty clear indication that they're, they've had a vaccinosis. And they've needed to mm -hmm. use the anti-vax four, five, six times throughout the course of the protocol. Okay. Awesome, Julie. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I oh, oh, Renee, I'm so sorry. I just clicked to turn your mic off. I'm sorry. Let me know in the chat if, what else you were saying there. I'm sorry for cutting you off there. Donna. Where are you? There you are. Hey, Donna, what's going on tonight? <laughs> Hi, ladies. Hey. Hi. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yeah, so I have a couple of questions, but the um, one that gets asked to me a lot is um, allergy testing. What are your thoughts on the various options of allergy testing out there? Uh, hair analysis versus blood work and is there a company or, a, or one that you would recommend? Well, um, I like hair analysis. I do. 
I like hair analysis. I like saliva. And there are some blood tests that are okay, but <clears throat> um, I would say the majority of them are iffy. Okay. You know, um, Jean Dodds has a really good one. Yeah, I like hers too. Hers is a really good one. And, you know, she's a immunologist and a, and a, and a, um, she's a really smart, smart, smart lady. So mm -hmm. you're having the, the saliva test, um, uh, you know, looked at by someone that's, that's incredibly brilliant. Uh, and then, you know, I think saliva is a lot, has, shows a lot more than, than blood tests do. Now, what would you think of that one compared to Glacier Peaks? If somebody's done Glacier Peaks, would it be okay for them to go ahead and do that? Um, just to fine tune the results? Would it fine tune it, give it uh, more of a clear understanding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're different. They're really different. They're, okay. they're, I think, and, and Sarah, Sarah Griffith has a, a hair test too now. That's really, really good. Oh, wow. Uh, so I think the more you can get the, the more information that you can get, the more you can narrow things down, right? To try to, right. to try and avoid. But, um, you know, it really depends. It depends on how, it really depends on how they've, I know people that have had so many tests and, and, and the, the animals are allergic to everything. Right. You know? So how do you, how do you deal with that? When you have an animal that's allergic to everything, then you can pretty, um, you can pretty much know that they're, they probably have leaky gut syndrome, I would imagine. Yeah. No, no. I mean, that leads me into kind of my next question, if that's okay with you, Steph. Yeah. Um, I know you're friends with Billy Hopeman and I've, you know, followed him and follow his uh, goat milk diet and stuff for a client whose dog has been allergic to everything and has tried every protocol, every supplement around the world, worked with two different homeopaths and still not had any positive result. I was thinking of suggesting the Billy Hopeman's raw goat milk diet, the th minimum 30 day diet to reset the body, to remove that biofilm that's on the gut lining and to give the products, once you get into the products, an opportunity to work. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think if, if she's really has done the whole, you know, done everything she possibly can, I think so long as Billy's helping her with it, right, to make sure that... Um, well, that's the thing. This is Canada, yeah. and he can't do it, and you know? He can't? Well, because well, he can't ship to Canada. Mm, I thought they he were. Sells, he sells to Canada. Does he now? Yeah. Oh. They're, out, they're, out, they're out west. Because but, last time I ma ma emailed him, they said they couldn't, but that was a year ago. Oh, yeah. No, no. He's out west now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they can ship to Canada. But what I'm saying, too, is make sure that, that you're directly speaking to them. Mm -hmm. right so that he can really help give um super specific advice right okay okay i'll look for them i'll look for them on i'll email them again and ask for that contact information okay perfect thank you julie you're welcome thanks Have donna good, you're welcome steph thank you all right who's next susie are you here with us let me see if I can find you here. And hey, if anyone doesn't want to ask live, you don't have to. I have your questions and I don't mind asking for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Susie. There you go. You should be able to talk. Unmute. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so Susie's got a 14 year old cat with a broken mandibular canine tooth at the gum line been this way for quite some time do you feel it's necessary to extract if it seems not to be causing pain or would you recommend an x-ray to check for any 
apical lesion to decide happy birthday thank you thank you um <laughs> how old 14 yeah 14. Four yeah how long did she say it's been broken for for quite some time mm. well i've got lots of different views on that um if it's if it's uh um if it's broken and it doesn't, it's not swollen around the gums or it hasn't, it's not going brown and black and gunky or you can push on, you can push on it and they don't flinch. They're not eating on one side compared to the other side. So they're not showing any, um, uh, they're not showing any symptoms of it being tender or sore. I would, kind of i would tend to leave it until there's a problem until it looks like there's a problem you know it never hurts if they can x-ray it a lot of clinics won't do a dental x-ray without a general anesthetic so it's you know if the rest of his teeth are really good and he doesn't need um uh it, it and he doesn't need like a dental period like his whole mouth then i would just I would personally, I wouldn't do anything if it's not causing a problem. Um, if you think it's causing a problem and the rest of his teeth need to be cleaned, then I would take him to a, I would take him to a dental specialist. I wouldn't do it just with an average, at an average clinic. I would get him in, have them, um, cause he's going to have to have a general anesthetic anyways, if he is dental, I'd have the whole dental done. And then I would have them while he's out do a fast x-ray, see if it needs anything done to it. If it doesn't need anything done to it, I'd leave it alone. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. Rest of the teeth are horrible. Definitely needs a dental. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a different situation. So if the rest of his teeth are really horrible and he really needs a dental, <clears throat> then I would, um, uh, for me, dentals are all about how fast they can get in and how fast they can get out. So, you know, you want to, it's not like us, right? Like when we go and get our teeth done, um, we don't have to be put under a general anesthetic. So you have an older cat. So number one, he has to have blood work done before they do a dental and make sure that his kidneys can actually handle a general anesthetic. That's one. Two, um, once you get the blood work back, if there's any, any concern about his kidneys or his liver, I would be, you know, supporting his kidneys and liver at least a month prior to doing the surgery. And then you can ask them, especially if it's a, a dental surgeon, you can ask them to put your cat on fluids. You can pay extra and have your cats put on, your cat put on fluids while, while he's having the dental which helps the body, his body and his kidneys to flush the, the anesthetic. And then they can um, um, remove that tooth if they, if they feel like there's any kind of fractures up farther or any concern for anything like that. Awesome, thank you. Welcome. All righty, Belinda, are you here? There you are. Let's see if you're... Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm just watching the presidential election. Hold on, let me turn it down. <laughs> I'm in the U.S. Sorry. It's okay. Just waiting for a result. Hi, Julie. Thank Hi. you so much um, for yeah. taking my question. I'm working with Andrea. Oh, okay. And we are both scratching our heads. <laughs> I have a 10-year-old rescue. Um, I rescued him at eight weeks old from the Korean meat farms, um, and he came to the U.S. I know nothing about his history other than his mom was a Korean, Korean terrier, and um, he came to me with a grade four five heart murmur. Um, he has some spaniel in him, it looks like, but we never really did the DNA test. Okay. Um, he always had a gastric problem from birth, and I just thought it was food intolerance. I did the NutriScan test. Nothing came of it other than slight reaction to barley and poultry, um, but it wasn't enough 
to like go red. Um, I always tried to get him on high quality kibble. And then I even ventured with raw. Um, he didn't respond really well to the raw. Um, I tried freeze dried raw. He did better with that. He did a little bit better with canned food. Um, then the cough started getting really bad. He's now 10. We've gone ahead and had Is him. Cough? He's got that gagging heart cough, they call it. And I'm not sure if it's the retching because now acid reflux came into pe into play with this whole congestive heart diagnosis. So this year he had his echo and he was diagnosed with uh, the left mitral uh, disease, valve disease and congestive heart failure, but he's not in heart failure and he has no fluid on his lungs. Yet the cardiologist said hemobendin, Lasix, um, bubucenidine, sorry. <laughs> um, I wasn't too sure about the B1. Uh, Lasix made him collapse. And mm. I went for spirolectone. Um, he's tolerating that a little bit better. We are still on the PEMO. Um, Andrea's made me a heart tonic. We're going to start that. But I'm really struggling with the AR. And I can't get him to stay consistent with the gulping licking and then last night he just like profusely vomited all over the house everything I gave him I gave him the slippery elm I gave him the goat's milk and then he just started vomiting and I couldn't stop it and I went for my arsenicum I went for my nux vomica I went for every I, I must have like an array of homeopathics I'm still not really sure which one to try next I have to call Andrea but I can't get the vomiting stopped without the serenia. And I know that's a cover up. Does he, does he seem nauseous? Yeah, he just does this horrible gulpy licky. Yeah, but he, is it after he eats, before he it, eats? Yes, it's after he eats. And sometimes when he's getting close, like right now he's getting close to having an empty belly because today we went really slow on the food because I didn't want to have another episode. Um, and now he's on a fresh diet. He's on venison. Like um, just food for dogs. Uh, the venison, squash, sweet potato. It's all cooked though, right? It's all what? Cooked? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, okay. And he's on gut soothe and all He's that. on gut soothe. I talked to Kaylin. Yeah. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you for your sale. I went ahead and got healthy gut. You know, the liver enzymes are going all over the place on the blood work. Um, he's had two episodes of vestibular dog syndrome this year. Okay. And um, the last one he was admitted with fluids. And he seemed to be doing a lot better after that. Um so ten? he's 10 yeah and you haven't started her her the the heart combo yet no we did the coq10 the yeah. osana okay. and i'm just well, trying to play it safe i'm not adding too much don't worry about the heart tonic it it's it's a the like combination heart tonic that she's probably sent you is one that we used at our clinic yeah and it's, it's it's incredible it's really incredible um okay. i would i would not be worried about starting that at all okay okay uh, do you feed him raised up not yet because i don't understand that whole concept like how raised do i feed him raised like where he's eating you know, there's, there's a lot of different philosophies of whether you should or whether you shouldn't, but I have a dog that had um, a, a severe injury to his esophagus and probably has scarring and the whole, but when he was eight weeks old and um, he has to eat raised because of the, of the, 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 the scar tissue. Because mm -hmm. if he doesn't, he does exactly what you're saying. 
like he he needs to eat and it needs to go down and and stay down whereas when they're bent over they're it it's just it's just more difficult for for dogs with gastric reflux to eat unless you can get them to lie down and eat which is prime it's what it's what would be m much more natural for them in the wild right is to be lying down and eating right right um but that would be one thing i would definitely feed him um uh raised on something okay one. two i would get a i would get that i would get that into the heart medication into him um when henry's in something like that i was giving him gut soothe four times a day so oh i didn't know i could do that okay yeah. I was giving it to him like four times for, I was splitting it up. So really he was getting like a double dose of it, but he was getting it in small amounts four times a day. And, um, I always feed him before he goes to bed and yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. And the first thing when we wake up in the morning, he gets, he gets food and you know what he gets, you know what I feed him now that really mm -hmm. seems to help him is, um, I get dehydrated tripe. So you've got the, it's cooked, right? Because it's hydrated. No, it's freeze dried. Sorry, it's free, freeze dried. Oh, freeze dried. Okay. Yep. And it, I don't even, it just seemed, I think the enzymes in the tripe and mm. the fact that it's dehydrated, I think it really helps with, with the acid reflux. So I do that. Um, and then as far as remedies go, I mean, talk to Andrea too, but what really helps Henry and what really helps I think with, with is I would have a combination remedy for him mm -hmm. that when, when the second you think he's going into it, like as soon as mm -hmm. he starts like the, mm, mm, yeah, <laughs> then he starts running all around the house because he wants to get away from me. <laughs> yeah, from, from you or from it? Well, I, I think he thinks he's going to get in trouble. And yeah, so they, they get freaked out, right? So yeah. I, I would be asking Andrea, like I would, what really helps him is like a combination, mm -hmm. really high potencies of aconite, arnica, uh, nux vomica, belladonna, and, okay. um, and cholesynthesis. And oh, I'm going to try and remember all that. <laughs> I have to go look at all my, you can also put it in the chat. I'll get, oh, thank you. Uh, Steph to put it in the chat. And what really helps with him is I give it to him every like 10 minutes. I'll give him, I'll give it to him every 10 minutes, three or four times. I just bang it into him. The, and then the I, pellets, right? The pellets. Oh, I make it into a liquid and I have a syringe mm. and I oh. give him about, I give him about 0 0.5, I give him about a mil, close to a mil of it. And I do it every 10 minutes for three or four doses. And then I wait and then I prop them up with pillows. Like you can prop them up with pillows. Like if they're lying down, try to get pillows underneath them to okay. just, get, just get them raised. And that really helps his heart too. That'll help, that helps with their heart. So okay. any heart dogs, any dogs with gastric reflux, I always, always try to make sure that when they're lying down, I, I lift them up sort of from their, if they're on their side, let's say that mm -hmm. their that their rib cage is higher then their under pits are higher and then their heads higher. So they're on an angle, right? So they're kind of like sitting up and if they're lying sort of sternum wise, I put, I put uh, a thin pillow under their sternum or their chest, and then I put a pillow under their head so that they're, they're like that, right? This is their head. You want to try and keep their heads and their esophagus elevated, and that's very good for heart, heart dogs. Heart okay. dogs be much, that's, that was one of my first um, things that I, that I learned from a really incredibly beautiful dog one of the very first heart dogs I ever had at the clinic that wasn't diagnosed with heart disease. And it's like, she's like, yeah, you know, he always sits up like a human being and then he'll kind of like fall. The only time he can fall asleep is if he's sitting up and then he puts his head sort of on the wall and he mm. falls asleep on the couch. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Or 
like what's that saying so he had an enlarged heart and he couldn't get comfortable when he lied flat so anytime you've got heart heart disease or a, esophagus stuff or acid reflux or anything like that always always helps to raise them up Okay. Yeah, I just noticed he does gravitate to the double pillows and things when he's higher. I, yeah. I did a roll up on his head last night because he was so gulpy. Um, yeah. I couldn't get, I couldn't get anything oh. stopped. And CBD oil. CBD yeah, I was using, I was using New Life. Do you have another recommendation? New Life? Uh, New Life Naturals. We ran out. I don't know that one. Um, okay. I like um, uh, Source CBD. I do like Source. Um, okay. You know, he got a, he's got some bad wraps, but uh, I still think they're good. And I so, and I also think that um, Stephanie, what's Angela's? Uh, CBD Dog Health. CBD Dog Health. They got a really good one too. Okay, and just oh, at night. Pardon? Just at night. Um, yeah, before, he, before, whenever you think that he's going to be the worst, like give it to him maybe just before, um, before, just before you feed him at night so that oh. it's sort of in his system, bef like before it even starts. Okay. And he does, um, still try and chomp the grass outside to give him some relief. That's just probably the nausea then. Nausea or heartburn. Or heartburn. I try okay. to calm him down. Uh, and the gut soothe should, the slippery uh, elm. Uh, should yeah, help. an arnica, aconite, belladonna, nux vomica, and colosynthesis. Okay. And just the heart remedy, is that enough or does he need to be? He's heart remedy, Andrea's heart remedy, the CoQ10. Does he need to also have the hawthorn berry separate or shall I just not do the hawthorn berry? You started it? I used to use it about six months ago, but I have, we've kind of stopped. Andrea and I stopped everything and we're trying to rebuild a new protocol. Okay. Well, one thing at a time, other than the, okay. other than the remedies, other than the remedies, the CBD, the lifting them up the, that whole thing, I would do all that at, at once. But as far as supplements go, I would go very, really careful with that. Like, the thing that seems to help Henry the most is he's on phytosflora, phytosynergy, and uh, uh, gut sooth and, and liver tonic. Those are the four things that, that help him <clears throat> absolutely the most. Okay, so when I get the healthy gut, should I not start that? I would be careful with healthy gut because healthy gut is very um, potent. It's really, really potent. And sometimes it helps like a hot darn to help them digest their food, but it's also very, it's really strong. I would start with those other ones first. Um, uh, and then, and then you can, and if you do start with healthy gut, start off with a quarter of a dose. Okay. So then get phytosphora, phytosynergy and liver tonic. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I sure appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Stephanie, I don't think you spelled colosynthesis right, which is fine. Definitely not. Uh, okay. <laughs> Col colosynthesis is C O L O S Y N T I T H I S, I think. Colosynthesis. I think Andrea will. She'll yeah. hopefully understand uh, my uh, scribble. Uh, <laughs> closer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Julie, do you have time for one more? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Kathy. All right, Kathy, you should have the, the mic right now. Let's see if that works. There you go. Hey, Kathy. Kathy? <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to ask Kathy's question. Okay. Oh, oh there you are. Hey. Oh, hi. 
Hi. This is my first time. My first time doing this, so I've, I'm a little nervous. That's um, okay. I have a nine. <laughs> I have a nine-year-old rescue cat that I took to an IM doctor in March because he'd been throwing up all the time intermittently, and he was snorting and making awful gurgling noises. He had an endoscopy. Uh, showed his stomach was overrun with Heliobacter, oh, wow. and he had an, he had a nasal scan um, for the snorting, and they found a growth at the back of his um, throat. They okay. biopsied both both stomach and nasal passage, and it was they said he may have snorted something up his nose, but there was nothing there now, and it wasn't cancer. So I was very happy about that. Good. He was on heavy duty medication for like a month. I mean, prednisone, um, antibiotics. And that's when I found you guys. And I started giving him gut soothe. Shoot, Kathy, we lost you there. We lost you at gut soothe. Oh, bummer. Okay. Oh, there we go. One question, my basic question is I also give him liver tonic. So but I was we, he lost you at gut soothe. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, and he's on Fido. He went on Fido in August and yep. liver, tonic, liver tonic in September. Now okay. he's reading that liver tonic, you should only do that for like two to three months and then go off it for several months. But he's been on it continuously. That's is that fine. bad? It's no. okay? Yeah. Okay, and how about the Fido? Is that a continuous thing also? Yes, yeah, you can do that. Like the Fido Synergy? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I take I take it two or three times a day. And I how have, do you take it? Me, I you, put it in a little tiny bit of orange juice, and then I. And how much do you take for a human being? <laughs> I have the same amount. The yeah, the, half, the, the uh, pinch. I, yeah. No, a, uh, no, for for a human, six. you take you take the a level spoon that comes with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any suggestions for him? He's starting to intermittently kind of snort again. Not a lot, but a little gurgling sound, like an old man clearing his throat. And and what the <laughs> how's his gut? Uh, so so far so good. So far so good. He eats like a horse. I mean, I, the cat drives me insane. He lives to eat. Mm. Do you um? He re you gets eat? raw food. By the way, I make my own he, food. He gets raw. Okay. Do you? Does he, what's her, what is his poop? Does he throw up? Does he have loose stool? What is it? Um, no, he did, he was vomiting before. What, that's what made me. Shoot, it's happening again, isn't it? I don't know yet. Kathy, are you still there? Why the heck is that happening well, to you me? You know what, put in, put in the chat for her. Oh, she can probably hear me. Yep, um, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me now, good. I would just, you, are you in the US? Uh, yes, I'm in Connecticut. Okay, so um, I would, I think I would, I would go and I would get, a, I know the sound, I know I use, I say about Arnica all the time, but when you, Arnica is really good for any kind of inflammatory response, right? So uh -huh. the steroids and all that that you were getting, that would, whatever is going on with his nose, I mean, there's there's a bunch of things you could do. You could you could get a hold of um, Sarah Griffith. You could get a hold of Andrea Ring by phone. I mean, if, the, if he has, there could be a couple of things going on there. Um, if, if he's got something like, scar tissue from whatever he snorted up or mm. got scar tissue or if he's got like you know sometimes what can happen is they'll they'll snort up a like a grass something grass and then it'll sort of embed into the mucosal lining of the nasal passages mm -hmm. and then it'll actually dissolve like it'll break down and dissolve so they can't find anything but it'll it'll form like a almost like a tumor or a, a pocket or something like a, like a, well, like a growth or something, but really it's, there's nothing there. It's just a, a reactive process of having a foreign material lodged in the mucosal lining of the nose. So what would be really great is if you could get a hold of Sarah or Andrea and they could put you on remedies like thiocyanium um, arnica and silica, because those those remedies help to 
push out foreign bodies. They also help to dissolve scar tissue and, 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 and help with an inflammation. And Where would I, is there any particular kind of Arnica I would get? Well, Arnica, if you want to just go buy some Arnica, just go to the, go to the health food store. Health food store. Go buy Arnica 200 C and just give it twice a day for two days. See if it helps with the snorting. It's just intermittent. It's not much. I just sometimes hear a little bit of gurgling and I'm, I, yeah, I'm keeping well, a log. It's better, it's better to nip it now right. rather than have it get worse and he has to go on all those drugs again. Right. Yeah. He was on the drugs for a whole month. And yeah. as I said, he was a rescue. He was an out, I think he was an outdoor cat. My cats don't go out, but he could have snorted anything up during that time he was on the streets. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Good boy. I uh, rescued him when he was a year old. No. Yeah. This didn't, this didn't start till like a year ago. Yeah. Well, and how, he's how old? Nine. Nine. Well, he's young, really, for a cat. Yeah. I would be. I would be definitely talking to someone or trying to get something into him to break that down. Because okay. the other thing too is if he's swallowing a lot of mucus, like if the body's producing a lot of mucus because that's back there then what'll happen is that that mucus and that whole sort of systematic inflammation you know it goes it goes out goes right through the whole entire body uh -huh. okay yeah but just try to start them off the arnica and see what happens all right thank you so much and happy birthday and thank you for these seminars they're wonderful ah thanks we, re we really appreciate them oh you're welcome okay thanks, thanks Kathy. thank you steph um, so I just put in the chat there for you, Kathy, Sarah Griffiths, her website is theanimalsynergist.com. It's all one word. All right, Julie, where are we for time? We're over time tonight. It's okay, Robert. You can ask another one if you want. I'm just trying to look at them. I've got one with, for Jane. Jane, are you still on here? Jane, no, Jane's gone. Let's see, Judy. Judy, do you want to go on the mic? You're next up. I'm going in order, you guys. I'm not playing favorites. It says from Denise and Lou, I'm still here. I know, Denise, but I'm going in order. It's uh, Judy, if you want to take the mic, by all means. You can ask your question live. If not, I'll ask it for you. Hi. Hi. Hi, this is Judy here. Okay, Hi. Um, my dog is on um, STB's protocol and rotation with um, leaky gut protocol. But okay. recently I realized that his ease um, symptoms seems to move towards to, I don't know how to pronounce that type of ease, but it's, doesn't look like Canada. Oh, the oh, malastasia? The, the mal yeah. So, so is that a difference between these two types of yeast? Yeah, they are different. They're, they're di what did you say the first one was? What did you, what did you say? Malastasia? Mas yeah, and, and the other one? The other one is uh, stuck with the Kana uh, uh, doesn't okay, know how to pronounce that either. And you think that he had both? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Is okay. it like, is it's it the same? Because it got better. He got better during the first rotation of um, um, STBs. Yeah. And then we moved forward to a half a dose on uh, leaky gut. He got better. Now he's back on STBs and it slightly got worse. Mm. Okay. And how long were you on the on the on the the leaky gut for a week? You said two weeks. Two weeks. And then uh, before that, I was on um, about four weeks on ECBs. Four weeks on ECBs. And when he was on the ECBs for four weeks, how was he? Um, he was doing fine. He, some, some of the areas were cleared. And then when we moved on to uh, leaky gut, 
the anti-vaccinosis made him like really flare. And then uh, Thailand actually asked me to stop that and then uh, start with uh, gut soup. Mm -hmm. And then he was okay after that. So we continued for two weeks. Yeah. After the two weeks, I put him back on to ISTBs. And then um, he didn't have really a very bad flare because I started back on half a dose. But okay. then some of the patches, some of the red rashes or patches, it got worse. Hey. Hmm. Hmm. So I did some research on the type of ease. So I found out that there are two. Yeah. So I'm confused now. Well, don't be confused. It's like um, stuff like that is is confusing. There's mm -hmm. no. There's no doubt about it. The skin does, skin stuff is can be incredibly confusing. You know what I would do? To me, it almost to me it almost sounds like I would add one I would add one rotation into that, and I would actually add phytosflora into it. So instead of going, um instead of going yeasty bees to leaky gut to yeasty bees to leaky gut, I would actually, for something like this, I think I probably would go um, leaky gut, phytosflora, then yeasty beast, then phytosflora, then leaky gut. Because... Wow. Phytos flora's got um, fulvic and humic acid in it. And okay. fulvic and humic acid pulls um, uh, heavy metals and toxins out of the body. Someone else okay. had asked, there was a question in here about, uh, can you see where that went, Steph? There was someone asking about, uh glyphosate oh was there okay yeah um anyways for whoever asked that uh the fight liver tonic and phytosflora is really good for that because so what might be happening with your dog is if you're if if there is a lot of die-off like yeast die-off okay. there could be there could be a potential of having toxicity right so yes. when you're, when you're the butt on the same hand, phytosflora, the fulvic and humic acid also help to heal the gut lining. So you've got the, the canine species probiotic. Okay. So you're going to be adding that to it, which will help to, you know, when, when animals have a lot of, skin disease, what winds up happening is that's what put them on steroids, right? Because yeah. their bodies are in a heightened state, their immune system is actually too high and it starts to attack itself. So what mm -hmm. phytoflora does with that one particular, uh, the, well, two strains of the canine species probiotic, we can actually make health claims on that now saying that, that it's an immune modulator which means that when the immune system goes too high, it brings it down. And when it goes too low, it actually brings it back up. So it can, it can help to modulate the immune system with, um, with, with animals that are, have, have heightened immune response and then crashes. So okay. I could, that's what I would do. I would do, I would do leaky gut, phytosflora, yeasty bees, <laughs> Phytosflora, leaky gut, phytosflora, UCBs. I would I would rotate them like that. Make sure that two you're weeks. using. Pardon? Two weeks. Two weeks rotation. Yeah, that's what I would do. Make sure that you're using um, uh, liver tonic throughout the whole thing. And okay. if you can afford it, I would also be using phytosynergy throughout I all. I added. I actually tried phytosynergy when I started leaky gut and then the yeah. flare came out. Uh, okay. So me and Kylan doesn't know whether it's the anti-vaccinosis or it was the phytosynergy. So we stopped and then I put him on the leaky gut for two weeks and then he got better and then 
now I'm switching him back to ISTP. Okay. So, so I then, haven't touched then, back the phyto yet. Don't do that then. Just incorporate the phytos, phytos uh, flora first. Okay. Maybe do that for eight weeks. And then, okay. and then you could, and see how that does. And then you could incorporate the, the phytosynergy. Before going back to leaky gut? No, no. What I'm saying is that if you're doing it, if you, if you do an eight week rotation, meaning two uh, weeks, okay. two weeks of phytos of two weeks of leaky gut, two weeks of phytos flora, two weeks of, um, of East, East, right? And then two yeah. weeks of phytos flora again. Yeah. Um, and if everything's going really well, then you can try to incorporate the phytosynergy and see what happens. I see. Okay, got it. Because the reason I'm saying that is that the fulvic and humic acid and um, phytosflora really, really help to help the body to, and the liver to detoxify. Okay. Should I stop my ECBs now and put him straight into phytosflora because I got phytosflora at home? Yeah, you can. If okay. Cool. If he's having a flare up, you definitely can do that. Okay, sure. So all the doses I would just remain as half the dose. Um you could I would do Fido's flora as half the dose to start, but the second time you do it, I would if everything's okay. fine, I would go right up to the full dose. I see. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I and I, I don't worry I I not worry i don't worry at all but i would i would be um yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about doing the full dose of phytos flora but maybe for the first two weeks the first rotation of it do it half a dose and then okay. the second, second rotation go up to its regular dose sure so my leaky gut protocol and my ECBs, i should remain at half a dose yeah for now okay okay sure thank you so much you're welcome Thank you. Thanks, Judy. That was awesome. So Julie, just let me recap that. So the reason you introduced the phytos flora on our super sensitive dogs and cats um, is to help balance or modulate the immune system when, when we hear about these dogs and cats that are really going off the handle when they, when they get a, onto the protocol. Phytos flora does two things. So not for cats, but for dogs, right? Right. The phytos flora is the canine one. Yeah. Um, what, with autoimmune diseases, which most skin diseases are, right? Even including leaky gut. When leaky gut happens, it usually creates um, an autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. right? So Autoimmune diseases can come from many different things, but even if a dog has leaky gut or a person has leaky gut, it often creates autoimmune response because there are um, passive antigens and, and proteins and toxins going into the bloodstream that shouldn't be going in because the gut's leaking. Right. When it goes into the bloodstream, the body goes, holy crap, what's it doing in there? And starts to ramp up the, the immune system to fight all of these intruders which then in turn creates the body to start attacking itself so that's why with allergies and uh, any autoimmune diseases skin diseases inflammatory bowel disease all that stuff um doctors and veterinarians put you on an immune suppressive drug right to okay. bring to bring to, to to suppress your immune system yeah then well, first of all, you can't live with a suppressed immune system. But second of all, when you push it down, then when the drug comes off, it comes back with a vengeance, right? Like you, it just, it explodes. Yeah. So, so, and also when the immune system suppressed, you then go into um, a secondary bacterial infection because the body can't fight off bacteria when its immune system is suppressed. So then they have to go on antibiotics because they're suppressing the immune system for the autoimmune disease, but then they're getting secondary infections because their body is immune system suppressed and can't fight viruses and bacteria. So 
you you go into this very awful vicious circle yeah so phytos flora the canine species part of phytos flora so that the 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 the, the canine bacteria that's 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 specific for dogs that that's in phytos flora we've done studies now that prove that those those bacterias produce the 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 correct um uh, uh the correct notifications to the immune system that it becomes balanced so it works as a an immune modulator it's called so it modulates the immune system that if the immune system starts to go up and it's going up for a good reason because it's fighting bacteria and viruses it leaves it alone but if it goes up and goes into an autoimmune response it will bring it down almost like it's not like a steroid because you're not suppressing it it naturally brings the immune system down to a, to a, to its homeostasis or its balance and then if something happens and the body's being attacked by viruses or bacteria and it's becoming weakened and the immune system goes too low it will bring it back up so that's called an immune modulation and and phytos flora is an immune modulator awesome thank you and then you put fulvic and humic acid in it and fulvic and humic acid helps to pull is almost like a chelation so it's a it's an organic mineral that gives more than 90 different minerals to the body that that no other mineral supplement can even give and but what it does because of these minerals it pulls or chelates heavy metals and toxins out of the body awesome thank you thanks for unpacking that and kind of just breaking it down for us so that we can understand <laughs> um did we go through this like hold on i just want to look at one thing um just a sec uh, I will uh, definitely post this tomorrow in our Facebook group for everyone to hear about the Fido's flora. That's that's pretty cool. What are you looking for, Julie? Um, there's someone that's got a six-month-old puppy here. Um, is Julie Wens Wems still on here? Julie. I don't see Julie, no. Julie, at age 24, she had a question. No, I don't see her here. Okay. Julie, sorry, no, I don't see her. It got dismissed by it. Does that mean that she stopped? It got dismissed? No, it's not, sorry. Anyways, there, do you see where it says right there, Julie, and then W-E-E-M-S? No, I don't see that. In the questions? Look at, look at the questions and look at 8.24 p.m. It's probably 7.24 p.m. your time. Oh, right? okay, that's what's happening. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 7.24. Has she left? Um... Julie, okay, there she is. Is she there still? No, she's not online. Okay, well then, then maybe is she part of our group, Facebook group? You know what? I can't tell. I can search in our group tomorrow and see if she's in there. See, see, because it's a six-month-old large breed puppy that has allergies. Hmm. Had them since it was twelve weeks old. That's too bad because, because um this is when you really want to get them when they're six months old not when they've been having it for four years right right um well see take a picture of that or mark it down and let's see if we can get a hold of her somehow sure will do all righty everyone it is half an hour past the the session time julie what do you what do you think here it's what, um, 9.30 for you? It's, it is 9.30 for me. I'm just trying to see. Oh my God, there's so many, eh? 
Yeah, but hey, everyone here knows that if we don't happen to get to your question, we have a questions at adoredbeast.com email and we answer every single one of those emails and provide resources. You know, we can send you to Sarah Griffiths, who's taking clients. Like, we will help you if you send us a note, if we don't happen to get to your question tonight. Hi, Irene. All right, I'm just looking, is it good to have a ear flush often? No. It's no. not. No. Yeah. I'm asked if there's if it's good to have an ear flush often. I wouldn't. Um, my dog has asked her if I fed and I fed late night and early morning and can never fast him. Should be on a digestive enzyme even if I feed raw. If my dog has acid reflux and I feed him late at night and early in the morning and can never fast him, right? Should he be on digestive enzymes? even if he's raw fed. Yes, but I, he def, I don't know if Terry's still here, but if she is, um, yes, they can be on digestive enzyme, but anything with acid reflux should be on, on, on gut soup. It's so, so incredibly, incredibly helpful for them. So is, so is the digestive enzymes, but I always start first with the gut soup and then start with a quarter dose of the digestive enzyme and start to slowly work up based on how they're responding. Mm -hmm. I love the gut soothe. Is it okay to give liver tonic with milk thistle and denosil? And denosil, yeah. Awesome. It is. All righty. I think All that's right. it for tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, if we didn't get to your question, please shoot us an email, questions at adoredbeast.com. We also have a Facebook group, the Adored Beast Collective. Search for us there. We hang out in there during the day and answer questions. And we also do resources there as well for everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, Julie. We appreciate it. Everyone have a good night. Bye, guys. See you next Wednesday. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank